So an interesting start to the week here for FX as there were a few developments out of the G7 summit of note. I think there was a little bit of antici anticipation going into the weekend that we would see something to weaken the yen further. We had Dalian trading above 110 late last week, but uh, a bit of a damp squib this meeting and the U.S. Uh, talking a bit tough on uh, the prospects for uh, what it would consider fair, I think, in, in terms of uh, Japanese currency intervention with uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary Liu indicating the bar was pretty high for him to consider the currency market conditions as disorderly. On the other side, you had uh, Japanese Finance Minister Aso saying that he considered some of the recent moves to be disorderly, so there was a bit of a tough rhetoric from that side of things. I think we have to take the U.S. rhetoric a little bit with a grain of salt, as uh, some of it is political, I think, uh, wanting to, to look at the domestic audience in terms of the TPP trade deal. The U.S. administration wants to be seen as tough on currency policy to uh, help ease the passage of this TPP deal, which Obama, I think, would like to have as part of his legacy when he leaves office in early 2017. So uh, regardless, near term, we're seeing dollar yen lower. I think on the lack of developments, the lack of sort of indication on any new uh, intervention measures, uh, whether in, directly in the market or policy-wise, uh, and as well, we saw quite a strong uh, trade uh, report out of Japan, although for bad reasons with imports falling uh, considerably and uh, exports as well. And uh, the Japanese PMI quite, quite weak. We're seeing some risk off this morning early, and it's actually got Dalian you know, on the defensive. Tactically, a bit disappointing to be back below 109.50. That's where we close early this week. I think it's a setback for the bullish outlook. And if we're looking higher, that Ichimoku cloud has been a key resistance area. Look at the, uh, that indicator for where... Uh, the bulls are focusing for uh, a break higher uh, if it does pick up back up to the upside, which I think it should eventually. After all, if we look at U.S. rate developments, all the recent Fed uh, hawkishness, I think the needle points higher unless we have some kind of collapse in risk appetite here uh, in the near term to drive the action. So, dollar in this week, looking higher. The U.S. data points, few and far between this week. Next week is with all the big U.S. data catalysts, and it is those data catalysts that are going to prompt what the Fed actually does at that June meeting. So a bit of a, a limbo here for the dollar. Tactically speaking, in terms of event risks, I still like to buy the dips uh, in most dollar pairs, especially dollar risk if we're going to have wobbly risk appetite this week. So dollar Canada, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, etc. Uh, and we'll be looking higher there. For dollar Canada, note the Bank of Canada meeting midweek. I think the risks tilted to the downside in terms of dovishness uh, and, and risks for CAD weakness. The recent oil rally we should be noticing uh, failed to uh, see a CAD strength uh, extending. So I think a CAD a bit vulnerable this week in light of those uh, developments.